Hello everyone, welcome to the next webinar in 12 Days Training Webinar Series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12 Days Training Webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We run webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The previous webinars from this training series, as well as the webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are all available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen. We'll answer as many as possible of those throughout the webinar, and at the end, I'll email your questions to the presenter for his insights. Today's webinar will be presented by Graham Worth, who is Product Sales and Marketing Manager for 12D Field, with responsibility for management, development and channel creation of 12D Field services and products. Graham has over 35 years of experience in the civil construction industry and a wealth of knowledge of 12D model and other software packages. Today's presentation, 12D Field Pickup in 12D Model 14, Configuration and Setup, will run through the setup, configuration and use of 12D Field Pickup in 12D Model 14. A previous webinar demonstrated the features of pickup in 12D Model 12. Well, a lot has changed in 12D Model 14 and in this demonstration, we'll explore the setup in detail. We'll provide tips on how to maximize your field experience using 12D Field SDR pickup to produce attribute-rich detail surveys, providing your clients with complete metadata for their design and detailed use. Over to you, Graham. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, let's get rid of all those. Um, as Lisa was saying, today's a run across um, 12D field pickup in version 14. It's um, It's got some nice new features and it's uh, quite uh, different to what it was in uh, version 12. Principles are still the same. Um, SDR pickup is an SDR survey reduction, um, data reduction format as per the survey menu in 12D, um, but the um, it has been combined as, in, as it is in 14. So we're going to just start 12D field here to start with. Um, and I'm only using a simulator today, so it's um, it's it's pretty straightforward. What I'd like to do is actually just explain to those new users. This is um, we get a broad group of people that are using 12D Field now, and the, in the menu for 12D, the, under the pickup for data pickup, you've got the SDR and the basic. I'll just click on the basic, and what it is is mainly designed for management of um, the data such as pick up, picking up points for conformance surveys. You can obviously do stringing and so forth. And you have in the menu also the, the ability to um, your store point setup panel, which gives you the ability to manage how you actually pick up data and puts a lot of attribute data for your um, surveys and so forth and backs it up as well. Um, one of the, the newer features in 14 with with um, the basic pickup is that you can actually have a panel. There are lots of questions about the, um, in the older versions of 12D, there was a panel on the side showing the current name. And that's now in the uh, menu under uh, the, the, the settings for there. And you can have your pickup ID and your name for that. And you can change to the current name. So that's a little bit basic overview of um, the basic pickup. And it um, it uh, is very handy for, as I say, for doing conformance surveys and, and, and so forth. Um, under the menu also, you have the, um, the settings um, now. And there's a def defined tab in the settings now for the 12D field pickup. And it, it covers uh, quite a few areas uh, that you can set. And I've got most of the areas ticked on today for the demo. 
um, and also under the GUI tab, you've also got the connecting line. So 12D field pickup actually shows you the, the different lines uh, running from your last shot to the next shot of the same code. Or if you change code, it'll link that code up. And we'll see that more in the um, beginning. Um, what I'd like to do today is uh, actually also start up with the um, the SDR pickup files. And I'll just bring this menu up here and we'll just go into 12D and I'll look for that file there. And we'll run through here. And it's got that and we'll fire up 12D field pickup. So under pickup, you have SDR pickup. Now you can create um, a new file um, or use an existing file if you have one of those running. But in this case, we're going to create an existing file and I'll use this, this standard out of the box um, 12D field SDR config file um, allows you to um, bring up this panel here, which is quite a large panel in the fact that you've got to fill in a lot of things. There's, there's a lot of, for, for most, there's a, there's a lot of these tabs down here, such as the attachments, advance and Travis, that is not actually necessary. Um, so you can actually manage that file and, and bring that file down to a, a usable size. I'll just leave that one, uh, the, I'll just close that one for the moment and I'll just show another one, just finish that, and I'll just show another one that I've edited prior to this, pick up SDR, and we can choose one that I've reduced down uh, by turning uh, items on and off. And we can actually have a look at, uh, yes, that one. And this is after I've edited the panel. It's only asking for um, the definition file, your field files, your defaults, um, your report format, your map file, and obviously under the advanced, you've got your survey control and so forth. Um, that's a, a file that's actually uh, able to be reduced down dramatically um, through, through manipulation. So what I'll do is I'll just duck in and have a look at that again. Uh, if we can, I'll just go down here to 12D and we'll um, and look at the file types. Here we go. So I'll open up the standard file and I'll put that over onto the left there and we can have a look at that. Standard file there, actually I'll put it over to the right. And I'll bring up that one, the, the second one that we've got. And bring that over there as thus. So in this version here, you can see on the right hand side of the standard out of the box. So it says the first item here on this um, is the attribute definition file. Um, you've got that in there, but in here in this one I've changed, I've actually, after the attribute definition file, I've actually input the 12D field codes file that I want to use. It's just a matter of putting a space and that goes in after here. So the space goes into there. Um, and you can actually add that file in and that will actually bring this as it's done here. It's actually loaded that file um, into that, that there as well. And obviously with 12D, um, um, there's a standard of uh, displayed is or used is a one and zero is an off. So what I've done is I've got the um, tab for the map file. It's got a one, so it's turned on. And again, I've used the map file here to actually um, preload that. Again, survey control, I've put that in there. 
and that's um, allowing that. Whereas down here with this, you've got the map file over here. Um, down in here in this um, stand, the original version, there is nothing after it. So you can actually add that in and then you can turn off as many of the tabs as you do not need to use. And as you can see, there's a lot of zeros down there for that. So I'll just close these down for the moment. We can come back and have a look at those later um, and bring up that 12D again. So in this case here, well, I'm just going to load in a function here. GW, oh, no. and that fills in the field file um, and the reporting and everything else is preloaded through that file called the um, 12d field underscore sdr underscore config uh, format and I'll create that actually I'll just change that to B so I had that running before and create that file so that brings up this panel as you can see here when we've most people have probably seen to date the pickup panel, but there's ways and means of actually managing how your strings look and how your codes run. And that comes through the, um, the files that are underneath 12D field here. One is called the 12D field codes editor. I'm just going to fire up this and we'll go ahead and have a look at how um, I have set up this and obviously there's a lot of users out there who have their own at the moment but this is mainly set up for uh, new users uh, and we'll read that file in there and I'm going to also open at the same time the uh, map file and I'll just bring that up We can see the relationship between the two in, in creating um, data. What I might do is actually drag that one, bring this one down, tidy these up a bit. That one down there, and this one will drag across here. Now hopefully everybody can see on this screen the details within these two panels. And if we look at the basic um, in your map file, and then you go to the feature codes in your um, road, for instance, in your, sorry, your 12D field codes file, um, I'm going to look at a couple of areas that are um, quite detailed in the way they do it and, and so down in here I'm just going to go down the first instance I'm going to go down to stormwater and we can have a look at in here that on line 208 of this map file stormwater is a code SW it's got a name SW it goes into a drainage model it's cyan it's a line and it's also um, got comments in there. But if we go here to the pick up codes file and we look at a pipe, we'll see the relationship between these two within the um, pick up code. So under the pipe code, we have that it is a, a feature string underneath drainage. So we'll have a look at the drainage first. Drainage is a group, and it's a group called drainage. So under that, you've got all these other codes and items, and under that, we've got a pipe, which is the, this, the code stormwater. So the pickup codes file is actually searching back to the code within pickup. And underneath the pipe code, you can see here, it's, a, it's defined as a line. You have the choice of actually having in this level of um, the pickup codes file, you can have a both point or a line. In this case, we're doing a line. And you can also choose up in here 
um, a feature group or a uh, include. And I've taken the next child down, so you've got creating a child up here, and I've got a prompt there called str material. Now, when we look at the um, the code, it's a choice box, and it allows us to um, have a look at those different choices. So I'm just going to come down to here. And you can see down in this bottom area, because it's a choice box, it opens up the data items. And we've got down in here, using the usual buttons for creating a new line or moving up and down the line. We've got brick, clay, PVC, and so forth. And then on the next line down within this, I've got the shape. And because we have the options of creating uh, virtual shapes for both pipes and culverts, I've got that as a choice again. And it's either a diameter or a culvert. And it's um, applying to a string. And so that when we look at the pipe strings up in here, and we go down to stormwater, you can see that there's actually, in this case here, there's a storm stormwater, and I'll just drag these out a little bit so we can see these a little bit better. There. A lot of people get confused with the um, the management of sizes of, of pipes and um, other items within 12D through the map file. And this should hopefully um, explain it a lot. I had actually a Queens, uh, New Zealand inquiry this week about this. So in this case, we've got STR shape and STR shape. And you can see in here that you've got the two attributes for stormwater in this case. And um, in the first attribute, it's got a two attributes. And we'll just open that up and edit it and have a look. And it's going to place the attributes under a group called stormwater. That allows you to actually apply all the, the um, attributes under that set as well. And you've got it in this case here, it's justified to the invert. And its shape in the map file is a diameter. And it's $SW for the, the size of the, the pipe. And you'll see here that because we're actually um, using the uh, S $SW figure, it's, it's looking for SW. And down here, we've got the and I'll just come back to the shape again and move down to here because you've got the, under a culvert, obviously with a culvert, you've got two values. You've got the dollar SW string diameter and the dollar SW string height for the height of the culvert. So that SW can manage having two different um, uh, pipe types under the same code SW. When we look at the um, SW diameter for a pipe, for instance, it's looking for a prompt of STR diameter. And there under here with the, the pipe, it's actually dollar SW STR diameter. So it, it actually looks for that um, value and applies it to the pipe string. And it's a real value. You can see up here, it's a real value for that pipe there. We have lots of choices within um, these children for the um, STR field codes. Um, and you can actually manage all of those um, through this, this list here. Again, with the height, um, is a real value that's looking for STR height. And then underneath our culvert, you've also got the dollar value for the second size as SW STR height. So it's looking for these 
two real values to apply to that string. Another thing you can actually do with the field codes is you can actually add in comments. So the next line down is just a text option. You can see in here I've chosen text. Um, we've got the, the group again, you've got opcodes, features and so forth. One I've put in here to last is, a, is one that is a, it's a real value, as in it's looking for a, a, a number or a value for the wall thickness. And it's got a, uh, a default value. And in here, when you're doing this type of real value, you can have a default. So it'll always um, show in the exercise, when you're doing the pickup, as 0.1, but you can actually uh, change that. And it's uh, obviously it's optional and it's applied to the string. So that's a pipe. Um, another one that actually utilises this type of setup um, is if we go up to in the, the map file here um, for uh, the OP, I guess we can do. Uh, no, actually, I'll do the um, the basic. We'll go to vegetation. We'll have a look at the tree. So here I've got on here is a tree. Its um, name is tree. Vegetation, veg tree is the model. And if we go down to the vegetation down here, again we've got the vegetation. And underneath tree, in the as a child of vegetation, within the pickup codes file, we have the feature code tree and it's looking for the prompt tree which is matching the key up here tree so the pickup codes file looks to the map file for the details and it allows us to to actually um, have a look at those if we bring up here into the string we've also got the um, sorry the vertex under the tree in the symbols vertex, I've got a list of the uh, different types of trees I can choose. Um, they come with as two attributes again, and we can edit that and have a look. And you can see there it'll place it under the attribute tree of a group called tree. The foliage type comes from the symbol. So that matches the bush and so forth with these. But under the tree down here in the pickup codes file, you've got tree as the feature. The next child underneath that is a choice box and its name is species. So it's got the choice and there here is the list of the species. And that actually runs in here and it looks for those um, those species that are within there. We've also got another one in here for um, the trunk size and it's a real value. So it's looking for a size of the tree. And you can see under the um, under the, the vertex two, we also have the trunk size there for that vertex two. Foliage size is a real value. So it's actually sizing the um, the spread of the tree, and you've also got a text for height for the height of the tree. So it's just as a text comment for that tree. But it allows you to actually um, manage those. So the tree value is to add a, um, a line in here. We could actually add in another item in there by just pressing the, the um, add a child, and that'll, that'll add that to that as well. So that's looking at those. Um, if we go up here to the basic again and just look at some very straightforward ones, um, here with the bottom of the bank, um, it's a feature code. It's under topography, a child under um, topography. It's called bottom of bank 
and it's looking for the output of BB, which searches back to the um, basic tab and it finds um, BB in here and there's your top of bank for that. So that's how they're all linked to linked together and it's um, quite simple and easy to run through. Now within the pickup codes file also, and I'll just um, finish this uh, map file here. So we're done with that for the moment. And if we look at this pickup codes file further in depth, and I'll just minimize that down, minimize that down, bring down the vegetation and the drainage. So we've got our list of features. We have the ability to run features, opcodes, and attributes. So we can actually add on attributes afterwards. In this case here for an opcode, I've got opcodes um, as a group. Um, underneath that, we have a child of opcodes called closed string, and its output is the opcode number 20, which is the, the call for that as well. Uh, there's many different opcodes in there that are run. You can actually, within, and we'll have a look at that later, within the hotkey bars, you can actually run some of these opcodes directly from a hotkey as well. And a string text in here, for instance, I'll go down to the very bottom one for the opcodes. It's a, um, an opcode underneath the opcode. And with these, you can actually, you have the choice there of creating groups within the opcodes um, and also the includes. And the prompt is string text. Its output is 73, which is the, um, 73 is the attribute for a vertex and its text, opcode 73. So there's quite a number of opcodes in there. You can do the next segment, the previous segment and so forth. Underneath the opcodes, so that's a little bit about the opcodes. So just to add in a new one, you can add in the, just run a child for that. Underneath the um, attributes tab, um, within 12D field pickup, there is the option to add attributes. And I've just created a few in here. So we've got a, a um, area called attributes. So if we go back up to the header, to the very beginning, and we can actually add in, you've got a header, a footer, features, which we looked at up in here on feature codes. You've got opcodes and you've got attributes and a file include, which is a little bit advanced and we'll come back to that at a later video um, for this. But under the attributes, we've chosen attributes. Then as a child under the attributes, I've actually added in um, a, an, another attribute under the attribute, which in, in this case, you also have the choice of creating groups and so forth. And I've just created that as um, bedding material. And the um, output is bedding. So we'll see, and I've actually taken the, um, to show later in the exercise, how the output is actually the output attribute name. So the, the attribute name. Then under that bedding, I've got a, another child as the choice. And we can add in there, I've got sand and concrete bedding, and it's looking for the, the, the bedding as well. Um, another example is a depth of a um, pipe, for instance, under the ground. Um, I've got a depth in here as an attribute. Again, it's an attribute. Its output is attribute. Its message is depth. So we'll see that message before. And in this case, it's a real value. So we can actually um, type in that value. Um, and it's applied to the vertex. Next one down has got quality. And I've got the, using just an example here with the um, SUI quality. So the quality is an attribute. And underneath that, I've got a child um, of a choice. 
And we've got our A, B, C, D for our SUI qualities, and it's, it's labeled quality value. And I've also got a default. So in here, there's a default with a choice box um, to actually what will it always default to. You can change that, and it's optional. So you can actually, um, you don't actually have to put anything in there, but you can actually change. So the default actually just shows a value for that box as well. And last but not least is a string message, and I've got a, t a text message in here. So the attributes is an add-on um, value to um, pick up. Uh, not a lot of people that I know of are using it at the moment, but it, it for things that are quite globally um, used within your pick daily pickup, the attribute uh, option in there can can bring those to the forefront and make them user friendly as we go forward with that. So I'm just going to actually uh, minimise this down for the moment, and we'll have a look at um, the SW code. So underneath the code, we saw the code in the, the listings of the codes or the feature codes, um, and there's a lot of those. You can actually, through your global um, config file, you can define the numbers of rows and, and columns, that the numbers of columns and the numbers of rows that you want to see in your panels. Um, and we'll have a look at that later if we get the chance. And I'm going to just go here and we'll have a look at drainage again. You can see all those listings are coming through. Um, this, these numbers that are down the side uh, give you the ability to actually, if you've got a keypad on your um, on your controller or your tablet, you can actually utilise those numbers to pick those as well. So in this case, we've got stormwater um, string number one and we've got down here um, the different styles of measures so m is just a straight measure uh, this is a grayed out at the moment but it's the store button ms is measure and store prompting for the attribute so it doesn't allow you to actually um, preload it uh, but this one in here is the mr it measures and records using the last attributes plate. So we'll take a, a shot here on with MS and we'll just actually position that in there. And I'll just get rid of that. And just popped up behind it. And so in this case here, we saw the values that we had in the um, 12D field codes file and the map file. So the, the value for SDR material is coming up. So we choose that and we get the, the list of the, um, the values in there. The shape, again, was another choice box we had in this um, file, the pickup codes file. And then we're, um, in this case, we're going to choose the, the diameter. So it's asking for a diameter. Um, and I'll just put in a one value uh, there, one metre. And you can see here the wall thickness. That was a, a another default value, of one. It's a real value. I'm just going to change it to uh, 1.12 1 as a value. And you can see down here you've got the wall thickness, and that was a, um, a suggestion by one of the users. Um, and we'll set and conf continue that. But as I was saying before, you've also got the ability to run um, a, an attribute onto this as well as the attributes that we've just created. Under here, into the attributes, you've got the ability to put in um, attributes for that. And I'm just going to, I guess I loaded up an old file. I apologize. I'm just going to finish that and exit that and start one more time pick up. I'd actually written a different file, so I'm going to go create again, uh, create, and I'm going to put a one in here because I'd changed that file with the attributes, and we'll go
and create that and start and create that. My apologies, having a few hiccups today. And I'll measure and store that again here. We'll just run through that. As you can see, it's pretty quick to, to um, start up. Material is a reinforced concrete pipe. The shape will be diameter, diameter is one. And we had down here 1.2 and set and continue. So that's picked that up. And then in the other, as I was just saying before, you've got the attribute. So we've got now an attribute listing that we saw in that pickup codes file. And we can actually add an, a, an extra attribute to that. I could put in there a depth and have a value there of 1.44, for instance, um, and set and continue that. And that will actually add that on there. I can go and put in another attribute here for the quality value. It defaults, as we saw in that file, to D, but we can have the um, change that to quality A and continue that. And I'm just going to, because I'm using a simulator, I'll just move this TPS to a new position and X, Y, Z. and put it up here. And you can see in the um, settings here, I've got um, a, a yellow dotted line running through. Um, and if we go to the um, settings for 12D field pickup while we're just waiting for that, um, under the GUI, you can see this GUI tab within the pickup within your settings is a divided to line and it's yellow. So that's the line showing the join to the last um, point of same code picked up. And here we've got our measure and store. We can have measure and record. But I'll go into it in a minute with also. We've got our, also our hotkeys. So we've actually replaced the M, the MS and the MR on the panel with hotkeys so that if you wish, you can actually minimize that down a little bit. You can see here I'm running item 30, um, point ID 36 stormwater one, and I've got the full um, listing of measurement styles down in there. And we can do measure and record there. And so that actually just loads up the last and we've got our pipe picked up in um, values. While we're here, we put those extra attributes on, and I'll just bring this back up again and go to the um, to the other and attributes. And I'm going to put a quality on this shot here of A again. Actually, I'll do this one as B. Continue, and I'll do a another attribute. I'll just add that on there as the um, the depth, and I'll make that depth there 1.35, for instance and set and continue. So that when we actually look at the um, string attributes for the, this pickup in here, we've done, and I'll just pick that attribute and we'll pick that string there. Now we can see here we've got the stormwater, it's got the diameter and our 1.2 wall thickness as an attribute. If we go to the vertex up here, You've also got underneath the your standard measurements and for your SDR, you, you've got your 12D field measurements station set up. But it's also added in, as we saw in this attributes here, for these two attributes in here, for this end, it's got the quality um, and the depth. So if we could click on the quality, it's B and the depth. So that's just another way of actually adding, adding in attributes to um, to 12D field um, and putting that on. With those attributes, and it's an Im important information for this, most attributes are applied to a survey, to the survey points, but within the 12D field pickup codes file, you can actually um, apply the attributes to the string and the segment. 
And so here you've got that. And if I actually go to the segment, um, in this case, there's nothing, but you can also add those on to the next segment and so forth. All right, so that's um, obviously we can, with pickup, we can have a look at our survey data reduction file. We've got our measurement IDs and we can have a look at the the first measurement. And again, it links that so that you can see where your measurements, uh, this measurement is to, is coming from and what station it was picked up from or what set up. And again, we can move that measurement up to there as well. Uh, and that gives you the ability to have a look through and just look at the, um, the data that you've been picking up. I'll just finish that. We can do a recalc, we can do reports, right? We can record a um, audio file um, on a tablet. Uh, most tablets now you can actually take a photo straight from there. Um, with the favourites, if we go to the pickup in here, we can actually run in here. We've got single and I've got the, the favourites options. At the moment that's empty. So if I go back to singles, and I want to actually create this as a favourite. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of um, CR. So I'll just get rid of that one. I'll get rid of KB. And I want to save those as a, as a, as a favourites file. So we can actually go to the other. And you've got this button here, which allows you to go single to favourites. And I'm going to write this as a file as it, GW2204 for today and save that to a, to a favourites file so that we can finish that now and that's on our listing. And I'll go back up to pick up here and just so there's no smoke and mirrors, I'll delete and we're using this delete button on the right hand side here, delete a couple of those items um, and get those off there. So that's our single listing in there. Um, and it allows you to actually um, run through that. You can see this is a current one. Now, if I go to the favourites, um, again, there's there's no favourites, so I actually have to go back to the other, and I need to actually set a favourites. And I've got in here um, GW2204. So there you go, it just, it's just loaded that in the favourites now. With the favourites, you can also do a, um, a templating format. So in this case here, I've clicked on this button over to the side here for none, and I want to run in a zig format. And so when I actually move down, you can see that the current value is SW, and the next one in the favourites run of zig will be tree. Um, you can also um, choose codes to be non-active. So you can actually turn them off as you're running. So the A button allows you to make it um, active and I'll just put those back on again. It's a toggle format so that you can actually manage that there. Now let's have a look at these buttons down the bottom here because a lot of people just use the panels. The, some have many different hotkeys over here. But let's have a look at these buttons in here. I've actually only got one, two, three, four. But when I minimise it, I've got the full set that's available for pickup. So you've got measure, store, record, measure and store, measure and record using the last attributes, confirm measure, full screen, full screen measure, full screen um, measure and store and so forth and D is the minimising. That comes from a file within your um, within your user directory. And if I bring up the user directory here, you can see under the user directory, you've got all these files that I'm sure many of you are familiar with these days. Um, and we've got this one here, the SDR pickup panel button options. In tick or file from mix um, design of software, it's got the forward slash for comments. So this is a, a help area.
at the panel itself, I've actually got um, this um, set up here that matches that um, panel down here when we bring this back up again. So I can set that up. We can actually easily turn that off and I'll just, um, I'll go back down to that file and I'll get rid of CM. And I'll save that file, save, and I'll finish that, save and exit, and I'll just start that function back up again, pick up, set out, and I'll go to SDR. So this is our last one, and I'll use that last one. So that now we've only got the two buttons down the bottom there. So if you're a panel user and you like actually utilising those those buttons down there, you can actually minimise the number. And uh, it seems as though most people only use the measure, measure and store asking for attributes and measure and store recording. Again, they can be on hotkeys over here. Um, and it's quite a simple method of uh, managing those hotkeys. If you look at the, um, so the, do, 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 the user hotkeys here, and I'll also bring up the hotkey bars. Just bear with me while I resize these. And I'll resize that one. With the hotkey bars here, you also have the ability, if I go down to the, or up to the pickup section here, let me just bring that back in. Yep. And I want the hotkey bars. User keys. Um, so in here we've got the user keys. Um, there's a lot of different options in there, particularly in 14. There's now new ones for actually putting in your managing your prism measurement styles and your prism constants. You've got your active panels. Then you've got this pickup specific ones down in here and the pickup specific measurement styles. So pickup measurement, um, which is just take a measurement is this is the command for your hotkeys or for your hotkey bars and you've got the um, pick up measure and store um, and pick up measure and record so here underneath the pick up panel that we'll see on the screen in a minute you've got pick up measure same command the hover message coming in and then the um, image for that hotkey, uh, which is taken from the um, the ability to, if I can just bring this up down here, which is taken from the image, which you can bring your images in and store them in the um, user directory. So we've got our uh, different um, hotkey bars in there. Which which match those. So there's a measure and store one, and measure and record here, and that is the image that is placed here. So it's TDF hotkey measure dot bitmap. Now that bitmap size determines the panel size, um, and it allows you to um, set those keys up. So here, as I said, there's the keys, and I've got in this instance here undo code. Um, so if I want to actually press the code there, it brings the code up. Um, and if I want to bring up the opcode, it allows you to look at the different opcodes. You've got the string plus and string minus, and you've also got an undo button from, from that as well. So we're just about there for a little overview of 12D um, field pickup. It's quite powerful and we're just scratching the surface um, with this. The, the power of the pickup codes, um, 12D field 
codes file is um, quite dramatic and it allows you to, to manage all of those. And we'll just have a quick look at that one again and read that. And as I said, again, you've got your feature codes listing. You can um, copy your, under the survey um, field codes, you can convert a map file. So if you've got a map file into pickup codes, but you will, because unless you've got your groups or the, uh, the the groups sorted, you'll have to sort them into the groups once you um, bring that into this file because it, in the first instance, it usually puts it into one um, area. So we're up to the area where there's some questions. And um, if you could, we're running a bit short of time here this afternoon, so if you could, um, email your questions or um, and Lisa will forward those on to me. Oh, over to you Lisa. Perfect, thanks Graham. Yes, as I've yeah, got a list of people's questions. We had a few coming through so I'll get those through to you um, right now for, for you to send people your answers. And the recording Thank of you. today's webinar will be available in coming days through the webinars page on our website and directly through the YouTube channel in the training webinars playlist. Keep an eye on our emails and social media for details of future webinars. We've got another one on next week and I think we'll be trying to run them very regularly again while everyone's kind of working from home. And if you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.